F1 is all about pushing the limit, and teams and drivers need to be kept in check. So who polices the rules and what can be done to stop them being broken? Here's your insider's guide to F1 penalties. Who decides when something illegal happens? To start off, all the rules are written out in various regulation guides, such as the new sporting regulations or technical regulations, and are amended for each new season, as well as often being tweaked throughout the season. The race director and race stewards are in charge and can hand out any punishment deemed suitable, from a simple telling off to a ban or hefty fine. Then there's the scrutineers, who check cars are legal and flag any issues, all while drivers are watched with eagle eyes from inside race control, where officials are glued to screens showing all the different camera angles and data feeds. Any potential infringement is flagged for review, and if it's investigated, the teams are notified immediately. The issue is discussed and a decision is made as quickly as possible. Drivers are only punished if they are wholly or predominantly to blame. So what penalties can the stewards hand out? Drivers can be reprimanded for minor misdemeanors, but if they get called up three times or twice for bad driving, it's a 10-place grid penalty. Teams also get grid penalties for changing excess parts. In the race itself, there's four standard punishments. The lightest is a 5 or 10 second time penalty. These are served at the driver's next scheduled stop, when the team must stay clear for the allotted time before getting to work. If they don't stop, the penalty is added to the final race time. Then there's a drive through, which is exactly what it says. The car must go straight through the pits at limited speed without stopping. It must be served within two laps or, if it comes in the last three, it's converted to a 20-second time penalty. Next, there's a 10-second stop and go, which requires a driver to stop at the team's pit box for the allotted time, have no work done and drive straight out again. It must also be served in two laps or, if it comes in the last three, it's a 30-second penalty. Then, at the strongest end of the list, if the driver fails to respond in time or a team works on the car when they shouldn't, they could be disqualified. If the car is retired before serving the penalty, it turns into a grid place penalty at the next race. Teams can protest and appeal against some penalties, disqualifications and suspensions, but it comes at a price, with protests costing €2,000 each and appeals €6,000. What penalties do teams get for using new parts? To keep costs down, gearboxes and power units are restricted in numbers, but teams often need to go beyond that and use more. The same gearbox must be used in final practice, qualifying and the race at six consecutive events, or it's a five-place grid penalty. Power units are more complicated, with each driver allowed no more than three engines, three turbochargers, three MGUHs, three MGUKs, two energy stores, two control electronics, and eight sets of engine exhaust systems in the season. Use more, and it's a 10-place grid penalty for the first change, five more for the next, and any more puts the car at the back of the grid. Changing a chassis after final practice, meanwhile, will lead to a pit lane start. What about tyres? Every tyre used at an event is marked with a unique ID that defines them and assigns them to a particular set. Using tyres without the right ID can lead to a grid position penalty, a 10-second stop and go, or even a disqualification. Any driver in the top 10 on the grid that doesn't start on the tyres used in Q2 will also face a 10-second stop and go. And what if a team does something wrong on the grid? If a driver is left without wheels on the car or with tyre blankets still connected with 5 minutes to go, they must take a 10-second stop and go once the race starts. If a team is still on the grid within 15 seconds of the off, if the driver drops places and doesn't recover them on the formation lap, or they cause an aborted start but then get going, it's a pit lane start. How are false starts checked and penalised? Cars are fitted with transponders that detect any movement before the lights go out. Any false start gets a 5 or 10 second penalty, or a drive through depending on the advantage gained. The same happens if a car lines up in a position where the transponder can't detect the car's getaway, and if the transponder doesn't trigger but it's a clear full start, the stewards can overrule. What about the safety car periods? Even though drivers know they get a penalty for overtaking behind a safety car, somehow they still do it. Sergio Perez, for example, got a 10-second penalty at Imola in 2021. Under a virtual safety car, drivers must stick to a minimum lap time set by the stewards and get one of the four standard penalties if they don't. 
What pit lane rules are there to break? Speeding in the pit lane is a no-no for obvious reasons, but despite having a special button that limits their car to the 80 km an hour limit, drivers often do it. During practice, they get fined 100 euros for each kilometer an hour above the limit, up to 1,000 euros, with an extra penalty if it was deliberate. In the race, it's a 10-second time penalty, a drive-through, or a 10-second stop and go, depending on the severity. Pastor Maldonado had one of the most bizarre violations ever in Hungary when he was caught speeding while serving a drive-through penalty. Teams that send a car out from a pit stop into oncoming traffic used to get a hefty fine. Ferrari got 50,000 euros in Bahrain in 2018. Since 2019, though, it's been a 10-second stop and go or a fine if the incident causes the driver to retire. If the pit lane is closed during the race, pitting for anything other than essential repairs gets a 10-second stop and go. Before we reveal who got F1's biggest penalties, we want to give a shout-out to our sponsor for this series, Party Poker, who currently have a special sign-up offer. If you head over to the link in the description, open a new account and deposit £10 or more today, Party Poker will match it on deposits up to £400 and give you £40 worth of free play too. Only available if you are 18 or over, T's and C's apply, and please be gamble aware and play responsibly. Do repeat offenders get punished more? Since 2014, drivers have been given penalty points on their license, just like a road license. It's usually three points each time, with 12 getting a ban. Most penalties come with points, which last for 12 months, but so far no driver has triggered a ban. Have any drivers ever got banned then? Yes, they have, but it's pretty rare. In the last 40 years, there have only been six. In 1989, Nigel Mansell got a one-race ban for ignoring a black flag in Portugal. In 1994, Mika Hakkinen was banned for a race for hitting Rubens Barrichello, and Michael Schumacher was banned for two for ignoring penalties, both at the same event in Silverstone. Later that same year, in Brazil, it was Eddie Irvine's turn. He upped the ante with a three-race ban for causing a four-car crash at the start. In 1997, Jacques Villeneuve was excluded mid-event in Japan after triggering a suspended ban for ignoring waved yellow flags at past events. He competed under appeal, but had his results scratched from the record. And most recently, Romain Grosjean was sent to the sidelines for causing a four-car accident at the start of the Belgian Grand Prix in 2012. What about even tougher punishments? Most recently, in 2020, Racing Point was docked 15 points and fined €400,000 for illegally using brake ducts designed by Mercedes. That wasn't F1's biggest fine, though. That was the €100 million Euro slapped on McLaren, along with disqualification from the 2007 Constructors' Championship after chief designer Mike Coughlin accepted confidential information from Ferrari chief mechanic Nigel Stepney. In 2004, BAR was banned for two races for using a secret fuel tank, enabling it to run underweight. 20 years earlier, Tyrrell was banned for a year for a similar thing, that time using an extra water tank. Once, Ferrari got a $1 million fine even though they didn't actually break the rules. They called team orders on Rubens Barrichello in 2002, and he made it obvious by letting teammate Michael Schumacher pass just meters from the line. Team orders were banned from then on, but six years later in the Singapore Grand Prix, Renault ordered Nelson Piquet Jr. to crash deliberately, causing a safety car period that handed teammate Fernando Alonso the win. The team was charged with conspiracy, but was only given a suspended disqualification. Although engineering chief Pat Simmons was banned for five years and team boss Flavio Briatore was kicked out of management for life. One of the biggest driver punishments went to Michael Schumacher, who had his entire season of points wiped out for deliberately crashing into title rival Jacques Villeneuve at the final race in 1997. To top it off, he also had to do a year's community service for the FIA. At the end of the day, penalties are a necessity in Formula 1. After all, without the rules, it could be chaos. They might seem harsh sometimes, but they do keep F1 as fair and safe as can be.